So today we are discussing lifestyle changes recommended for Parkinson's patients and implications of deep brain stimulation therapy. Hello everyone. Parkinson's is the fastest growing neurological disorder in the world. It impacts routine day-to-day -day activities of the patient and makes daily living a challenge. In order to increase awareness about this disabling disorder, today we are here to discuss sustainable and healthy lifestyle changes that can help Parkinson's patients. We will also add light on how the advanced treatment options like deep brain stimulation are helping lakhs of Parkinson's patients worldwide. Joining me is Dr. G Jackie Ganguly. Dr. Ganguly has extensive years of experience working in this field. I would request Dr. Ganguly to kindly introduce himself. Hi, Surya. So I am Dr. Jackie Ganguly. I am a neurologist and movement disorder specialist, currently working as a movement disorder consultant at Institute of Neuroscience, Kolkata. So I have done my fellowship in movement disorder from Canada, and then I returned to India last year, and I started my job here as a movement disorder specialist. And my special interest is in Parkinsonism, atypical Parkinsonism, tauopathy, and deep brain stimulation therapy. Thank you, Dr. Ganguly, for joining me today. To start with, could you also share what kind of disorder is Parkinson's? Yeah, so Parkinson's disease is, as you mentioned, it is fastest growing neurodegenerative disorder. It is why it happens because there is decrease in the dopamine. Why the decrease in the dopamine? Because substantia nigra in the midbrain from where dopamine get released, it gets degenerated. And that's why patient starts having symptoms of dopamine deficiency. So what are those symptoms? We call it trap syndrome. So T for tremor, patient have shakiness, rigidity for R, like patient have stiffness, both in upper and lower limbs, echinacea or bradykinacea means slowness in all the daily activities. And the P for postural imbalance means a balance, difficulty in walking, tendency to fall. So these trap symptoms combine the overall gross symptomatology for the motor part of Parkinson's disease, but there are also a big chunk of the symptoms and from the non-motor perspective, like patient may have autonomic symptoms, patient may have cognitive uh, symptoms, some sweating abnormality, urinary bowel bladder problem, sleep abnormalities, easy fatigue. So a lot of non-motor symptoms along with that cognitive issues like dementia, they can also be part of non-motor aspect of Parkinson's disease. So it is a slowly progressing disease. So early recognition, early uh, therapeutic intervention is of utmost importance. Thank you, doctor, for that brief understanding. It looks like Parkinson's really takes a toll on lifestyle impacting movements and daily chores. So could you tell us what role lifestyle changes play in a patient's overall treatment plan? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in the lifestyle changes, we mainly highlight in some gross uh, four or five points like uh, balanced diet is very important with uh, regular exercises under proper guidance and proper sleep, adequate amount of rest and cognitive and behavioral therapy uh, that can improve not only the cognitive aspects but also improve the quality of life. So I will discuss in details later but if you want to mention the few highlights, it would be balanced diet, it would be proper exercise, it will be cognitive behavioral therapy, along with definitely proper medication and the guidance. Yes, indeed. So I, I completely agree that these are the benefits of having a good lifestyle, doing exercises regularly, and those are very important. Also, could you elaborate more on the healthy lifestyle habits, especially for Parkinson's patients? Absolutely. So let's discuss one by one. First, coming to the diet. Diet has a very important role in patients with Parkinson's disease. So what type of diet uh, Parkinson's patient uh, can take? So we always ask the patient to get a lot of antioxidants. Antioxidants uh, like nuts, almonds, uh, green leafy vegetables, all the nightshade vegetables like the brinjal or eggplant, tomato and peppers. Those have good amount of antioxidant. Patient can take green tea. Patient can take blueberries, blackberries, 
and turmeric in india it is very common we always use turmeric so these type of diets second comes with more of vitamin d rich fruits like as i already mentioned uh, green leafy vegetables along with that uh, taking like uh, some fruits uh, and also i would like to mention proper dairy products uh, if the patient does not have any other intolerance to the dairy products milk is very good source of calcium and vitamin d and that's important because many parkinson patient suffer from osteoporosis and they have increased tendency to fall and risk of fracture so regular check up in the vitamin d and take lot of vitamin d rich fruits along with the antioxidants omega 3 fatty acid uh, is important here so in india we take um, regular fees like rohu fees hilsa fees they have good amount of omega 3 fatty acid uh, soybean has a good amount of omega 3 fatty acid flax seed oil uh, even soya chunk oil so these are the things what uh, will help the patients now what are the type and important also take adequate amount of water i would like to mention it very importantly because whenever we ask the patient to take levodopa that's the main medication for parkinson's disease we always mention take each time with full glass of water and no protein for one hour why this is important because levodopa get absorbed from the lower duodenum and jejunum so whenever patient is taking the levodopa he should always take it with a full glass of water that will not only help in good absorption of levodopa and will help to reach the levodopa in the lower duodenum jejunum but also will help in the constipation because constipation is a common non motor symptom in parkinson and that delay the, in the gastric absorption and overall all the symptoms get mm. aggravated by it patient may not get the adequate response from the levodopa and why no protein for one hour because levodopa itself is a protein it's a kind of amino acid so it has competitive inhibition with the protein so whenever you are taking levodopa you should not take protein for one hour so these are the things little bit but uh, it is of very much importance now what are the things to avoid for a parkinson patient what type of diet like avoid taking much of alcohol avoid taking much of smoking and mainly those fatty foods those uh, fried foods processed food better to avoid those because they contain more a bad type of uh, fats and they can increase your oxidative demand your oxidant load so you are one side counteracting with antioxidants as we are discussing and on the other hand if you start taking those kind of fried food it creates a mismatch because uh, you are again taking more of oxidants so these things should be avoided so more or less this is kind of a proper diet plan and definitely take an opinion from a dietitian coming to the exercise part now regular exercise is very important in we may discuss the exercise a bit later also in details but in briefly uh, what exercise does it uh, not only improve uh, your motor strength it in parkinson patient cognitive is very important because exercise increase neuroplasticity more on the brain connections and what it does it improves your cognitive abilities your attention your focus and that overall uh, has a good uh, response in your motor perspective like patient may avoid uh, fall patient may uh, navigate more in efficient way patient may more concentrate on day to day activities so it may be regular exercises like even simple things like cycling like walking those are very much important for here and some details we may discuss later and the third is stress reduction many of our parkinson patient have lot of anxiety so this stress reduction is very much important adequate sleep adequate rest we always say around at least 8 hour of sleep is very much uh, needed for a parkinson patient and sometimes i would like to add here uh in the patient may have uh, lack of sleep because they are suffering from nocturnal off symptoms of parkinson disease it has nothing to do with the itself sleep problem because of the patients are getting off in the night time they are having difficulty in moving difficulty in going back to sleep so this should be dealt with a proper movement is or a specialist with medication we can help you in that regard Uh, so i think we have covered more or less uh, this kind of parts for the overall healthy lifestyle and go for a physiotherapy as i was mentioning uh, with a proper plan we call it pd protocol in our institution and inq we have a proper parkinson's disease physiotherapy protocol and people are there who guide the patients 
to have these kind of things on a regular basis, whatever feasible. Okay. Thank you, doctor, for these extensive insights. These tips that you've given, they sound really good and they are also very easily doable. And I'm sure the audience will find them easy to under undertake and put it into effect. You mentioned about advanced care. So as we hear about deep brain stimulation is an advanced treatment option for Parkinson's. Can you briefly tell the audience what DBS is all about? Yeah. So DBS, we call it deep brain stimulation. It's nothing, just kind of a pacemaker, too easy to put on. Like we all know about the heart pacemaker, it is pacemaker of the brain, simple as that. So what, how DBS help? And most importantly, what are the patients should all go for DBS or is there any criteria those patients only go for DBS? Most importantly, what we mentioned that for having a good outcome in DBS surgery, it is important that we choose a proper patient selection. It has most important role. So whenever we are seeing that patient not that old when brain is not that much atrophied before 72, 73 year, cognitively not doing that bad, more or less overall okay. But even after optimal medical management, patient is still having a lot of motor fluctuation, dyskinesia, not getting a good control. Many patients we see when a levo with levodopa, they are doing good, but levodopa effect is wearing off. So these type of patients definitely should be judged by a movement disorder specialist. They are the candidates who go for this kind of advanced therapy or DBS. So what we do, we put two electrodes inside the brain. So two targets are there. One is subthalamic nucleus, one is globus pallidus. These are internal nucleus inside the brain. Most commonly we go for subthalamic nucleus, but sometimes we have to go for globus pallidus also. So we put those two electrodes inside the brain in the left and right. And the wire is connected with a pacemaker, simple like a cardiac pacemaker beneath the chest. And the advantage is once we stimulate those particular areas, there is a break in that pathological circuitry going on. You can't do that with only medication because medication has a half-life, like levodopa has a half-life of 90 minutes. You can't prolong that. That's the intrinsic property of levodopa. Only some medication, if you can add to prolong that action, but still the pathological circuitry is going on inside. Advantage of DBS is directly act in the pathological circuitry and cut that pathological circuitry. So improvement, what we see in the patient is mainly in the quality of life. How? Because not only we can program it uh, as a software programming thing with different parameters, we call it pulse width, voltage, frequency. Also, patient has their own programming thing. It's just like a mobile phone device. If the patient is feeling off, they can increase the voltage a little bit. If the patient is feeling too much on with a lot of dyskinetic movement, they can decrease the voltage a little bit. Just as simple as that, if you are watching a television show and lot of loud noise is going on, compare that with the dyskinesia, with a lot of excessive movement. You don't need to hear that kind of loud noise. Simply, you don't need to have those kind of excessive movement. So what do we do in if you are watching a television? We decrease the vo volume. Simple, we in the uh, DBS, we ask the patient to decrease the voltage a little bit. And on the other hand, suppose if you are watching a television and the noise is so low, you are having difficulty to follow. So what do we do? We ask uh, just to increase the volume. Similarly, in a DBS patient, we ask the patient to increase the voltage a little bit. This is simplistic, but there are also much more detailed programming that we do like every month we have our proper DBS clinic and all the DBS patient it takes time so DBS programming helps definitely like last one year we have undergone at least uh, 12 DBS uh, surgery in our center and that is one of the largest in whole India and patients all of the patients are doing good but yeah Properly patient selection, as I mentioned, and something should be like realistic expectation, what we expect from the DBS. If somebody thinks DBS cured the Parkinson, no, that's not true. But improvement is quality of life. If a patient go from point A to point B, the journey matters. How the patient is going from point A to point B. With DBS, patient can go from point A to point B very easily. Without DBS, patient can have lots of bumps, bumpy ride. In, from going from A to B. 
So that's how DBS helps. All right, that is very insightful and uh, glad to hear these changes in the field of Parkinson's. Also, when you work with these DBS patients, for patients who are undergoing DBS therapy, are there any specific exercise particularly effective for these patients with movement disorders? Yeah, so as we were discussing, DBS mainly uh, is connecting with that brain network. It is cutting the pathological brain network and similarly exercise help as I was discussing before. Exercise increase the connectivity in the brain. It increases the neuroplasticity. So patient not only become more aware of his uh, motor symptoms, like he is cognitively doing much good. And that's very much important for a Parkinson patient who is already or planning to go for DBS because patient needs to monitor, as I was discussing, what is on, what is off, when I need more current, when I need less current, when uh, how is this current doing for me when I am walking? How this current is doing or how this programming set of program is doing when the patient is having more tremor? Because many times we give A, B, C, three, two, three programs and we ask the patient, okay, whenever you are feeling like tremor is more, go for this program. When you are, you are feeling like you are getting stuck while walking, like freezing off gate, go for this program. The patient has to be aware to know this thing, how, when to do it. So exercise helps in that way. As uh, regular exercises, like uh, do some cardio, do some uh, aerobic exercises, like cycling, do some treadmill. These kind of things help in the mobility of the patient. So it's more of a comprehensive therapeutic approach or holistic therapeutic approach. Not only the medication, but also combine that with advanced therapy like DBS and combine that with exercises. If you are, if you want to go for some core strengthening exercise, yeah, go for it. But we ask the patient not to over exercise, not to just carry a heavy weight because patient may fall. Patient they are having more tendency to have fracture. So lift light weight as far as the exercise you can. And I, as I was mentioning, go for a proper Parkinson's disease protocol exercise. It's not not randomly sometimes we see patients who are doing uh, some random yoga it does not help definitely yoga helps but if you do it properly if meditation helps to increase your concentration for this type of patients but you have to do it properly some uh, proper uh, exercise programs like tai chi like tango dancing like boxing program and it is not only uh, available in canada or us it is very well available in India. In our centers, we also have it. So uh, more important is awareness. The patient has to be aware. What exercise is needed for me? How how feasible is that considering all my stage of Parkinson, considering my DBS? Because many times what happens patient before going for DBS, maybe in so stiff, so much tremor happening, can't work they may not do those kind of exercises. But now when patient is having DBS, after DBS patient may feel much better. And we have th at least four or five patients like that. I can remember who are doing very good in exercises, uh, who had much difficulty in doing those exercises before DBS. And these improve overall quality of life. Thank you, Dr. Ganguly, for your valuable insights. I'm glad we could help our viewers help understand how they can effectively manage Parkinson's with the help of lifestyle changes and understand more about deep brain stimulation therapy as one of the effective options to manage Parkinson's. Thank you so much.